Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, for the nine coming out, another community shoutcast for the OUSA Dota League Season 1. Uh, just loading into game number two of Felfi and Friends up against uh, TYK. Felfi and Friends were actually able to counter TYK's Wombo combo, which is that Naga Siren, uh, Death Prophet, Dirge, as well as the Nyx Assassin. Uh, joining me for as my co-caster will be 5200, mid player for Bambi Rising. How are you doing there, 5200? Doing good. How about you? Yeah, not too shabby. Interesting to see what TYK pull out of the bag this time. They're a team that's known for their pocket strikes. And so I'm hoping for some uh, Pandy, Pandarian, Brewmaster, but that could just be me. Yeah, um, I think FNF might be ready for that as well, so we shall see what happens. <laughs> FNF doing their homework, that power of friendship. I guess since they're all dentistry students, they're used to doing homework. So they come prepared research, to all their games. Research, yeah, <laughs> the best, right? yeah, that research skill. So just waiting for their captain Pandy to load on into the game. Since he's the drafter, he might decide to go for the Brewmaster and say, fuck it guys, I want to play Brewmaster. <laughs> Wait, let's draft around that. Who do you think counts as um, Brewmaster? Um, the thing with Brewmaster though is in lane, he doesn't have that much laning presence. Since uh, mana, his clap does a lot of damage and gives him a lot of lane control, but it uses up a lot of his mana, he's got a very low mana pool. And so Viper is a pretty effective counter to the Brewmaster, just because from level 1, you play hyper-aggressive, you zone him at the lane, you make sure it doesn't get any CS or any XP, and then that way you're able to control the lane that, uh, with Nether Toxin. Queen of Pain is also a pretty good counter, but that's because she beats pretty much every melee hero mid, just with the Shadow Striker uh, harassment coming out from that. <laughs> Looks like Pandy is having a few issues with his internet, so we might be forced to remake. <laughs> He was telling me earlier that he was having a few internet issues, so that could just be it kicking in. Being called out there by one of his players, Golfi, played the Nyx Assassin. Yeah, it looks like I'm gonna have to remake the lobby. <laughs> so bear with me. Okay, for those of you just joining us, uh, 49 casting game number 2 of Felfi and Friends up against TYK. Uh, their captain, Pandy, he actually wasn't able to connect to the game. I think he's having internet issues, and so we should be good to go. So I think we're just going to jump back into game number 2, since Pandy was having a few internet issues, but hopefully he should be the connector this time. I'm just going to wait for uh, him to confirm, since he's the one having issues. Okay, so it looks like we're loading into game number two. Joining me will be the mid player from Bambi Rising, 5200 Dead Bambis. Uh, he'll be commentating from in game, so we won't be able to hear what he's up to until we load in. So hopefully, uh, Pandy will be able to load in this time since he's the drafter and captain for his team, TYK. So, 5200, you back in? Yep. Okay, it looks like Pandy's connected this time, so we're just waiting on Sing to Valerie, who played the Naga Siren in the last game. There we go, it looks like we're going in for game number two. <laughs> Bit of smack talk coming up from Felfi and friends. Yeah, they're feeling very friendly today. And so TYK have first pick this time, so we'll see if they go for a few respect bans over against Felfi and friends. I'm hoping they ban out the Disruptor, since Felfi's friend, he's played him every single game he's had that I've casted at least. So I'm kind of waiting for teams to start counter picking him. They'll go for the Lycan ban once again. Do Felfi and friends play a lot of Lycan? So no, I Felf think um, TYK likes to team fight, so they don't want to deal with the split push ability. Right, yeah, because the few games I have cast with Felfi and friends, Felfi does play a pretty good Lycan. So TYK banning that out, they don't want to deal with the death ball push power coming out from the Lycan throw. Seconds remaining. Just because Lycan Nature's Prophet, if you leave him alone, he'll push down all your towers. If you lose a fight Five to him, like Katani, you'll lose a Rax. Absolute pain in the ass to deal Radiant with. Team ban. First ban Invoker, so Felfi and friends don't want to deal with the team fight presence coming out from the Quas Wex Invoker, or that ganking power coming out from Quas Exhort. 5200, do you play Invoker? Yeah, I do. Oh, okay. It's broken. <laughs> do you prefer Quas Wex or the Quas Exhort? Um, personally, I enjoy um, Five seconds remaining. Exhort. Exhort a lot more. It's more fun. Yeah, because you got but, that uh, GG Sunstrike. Uh, yeah, 
it's you can make more plays of it. But the um the crosswex is too broken right now too. It's, yeah, especially with EMP being up to 550 and giving Invoker half the money he drains. That's a huge buff to Invoker, just because he deals with a lot of mana issues in the early stages of the game until he starts getting uh, the Aghanim Scepter, which removes the mana cost for his Invoke, or until he gets enough levels to make it negligible. So having that uh, mana regeneration coming in from the EMP, and also the fact that you burn 550 mana, that's effectively the mana pool for a lot of heroes, especially in the early to mid game, or it means they can't use most of their abilities can be an effective way to control enemy heroes, as well as the fact that you've got that deafening blast, which is probably one of the best AoE control abilities in the game, and pushes them back, locking them down, and also disarms them afterwards. Visage, first pick from TYK, Undisputed King of the Tri-Lane, maybe sharing that spot with Ancient Apparition, who has been rising up in prominence at 6.80. So, TYK, one in the class Tri-V Tri this time, faring that uh, 1v3 bristleback. <laughs> Since uh, the standard flip switch was able to completely destroy Mickey Mouse and Lane, Mickey Mouse went for a very, uh, not too sure why he, he went right for that gank attempt up against the Bristleback, considering that he could just tank his blade spin and he just throw out his cool throws. Remaining. Yeah, that was questionable that he went for it. Yeah, Mickey Mouse probably the weakest link of the last game just because his plays were questionable as well as his item build. He went for a Battle Fury rush on a Juggernaut, even though he was playing from behind. And Disruptor, what do you know? Felfi and friends going with what they know. Felfi's friend, I'm pretty sure he must be sick to death of playing that Disruptor. Or maybe that's the only hero he knows how to play. We'll have to see when someone on the team finally bans him out. Second pick coming up. first pick the Disruptor. Yeah, they're the only team I know that first picks Disruptor. Like, most teams will pick it up as their second pick, or their third pick. But Felfi and friends, Felfi's like, he doesn't want to deal with them p p possibly banning it out, so he just picks it up quickly. Says, hey, I'm Drafter. And Bristleback, so Flip Switch played an absolutely fantastic Radiant Bristleback in the last game. He died to a, a three-man gank uh, when he was about level three, level four. Just because he was called out with the uh, Siren and Snare, level 2 and Snare, as well as the uh, Impale coming up from the Nyx Assassin. But after that, he was able to create so much space for his team. You have to keep in mind, Bristleback outputs a huge amount of damage, so if he gets enough farm and enough EXP, it's a damned if you do, damned if you don't situation. If you ignore Bristleback, which is usually your first uh, point of interest, then he's so hard to bring down. He really. deals enough damage through the negative armor from the Nasal Goo, as well as the damage he gets from Warpath, Five that he'll be able to kill off on the supports in the back line. If you focus him, he's not only a pain in the ass to bring down, he's also gonna probably going to kill time. one or two of your teammates while you're doing it, just because he could turn around and get those free Quill Sprays coming out from the Bristleback passive. Radiant and TYK going with an Ancient Apparition as well as a Visage. Oh my god, I don't think I've seen this before. We've got the two strongest trail lane support heroes in the meta in the same draft and possibly in the same lane. So Ancient Apparition and Visage. I don't know how effective the two will be in conjunction with each other because you usually remaining. want another support, a secondary support hero who has the uh, lockdown that the other hero Five lacks. Seconds Since remaining. Visage, he has Maybe Grape Shield. Uh, oh, go on. Yeah, oh, that could be going for a Reserve Sven, time. actually. Sven with Visage as well as the Ancient Apparition would be terrifying. Or even the Mirana, since you've got Grape Shield to help set up the arrow. And then Definitely, Ancient... Yeah, I, I think, I think TYK likes to play the Mirana as well. Mm -hmm. And so the thing to keep in mind with uh, Visage and Ancient Apparition in this case, is the two of them on their own actually have enough killing power to solo kill any hero that, that happens to stray across their path. Grave Chill followed up by the Chilling Touch for both of them. Both heroes have 600 in range, and then you have the 700-800 range solo assumption to finish them off. And so that does so much damage, it's a very powerful way to be able to uh, burst down anyone that, gets in your, that strays across your path. Centaur Warrunner banned out. Bit surprising considering they have the offlaner picked up, so they could, it would be a tri lane Centaur Warrunner. But I guess with the two squishy supports of the Visage as well as the AA, you don't want to deal with the double edge as well as the hoof stomp. Instant Clockwork ban coming out from Felfi and friends, considering Clockwork is one of those heroes that beats Bristleback in a 1v1 matchup. Because you, if uh, with Bristleback, if you control his mana pool, you control him. And so with the level 1 cogs, you can push back Bristleback as a melee hero, so he's forced to eat the cog burn every time he goes for a CS. Bristleback without mana, all he could really do is right click, and Clockwork is able to, he's more than happy to trade right clicks with him. He also has the battery assault, so if he catches Bristleback on his own, he can just beat him down that way. Reserve time. Makes it very difficult for Bristleback to get a lot of farm, since Bristleback relies on his cool spray to farm as well as to drive back the enemy uh, offlaner, or if he's up against a tri lane. Also very strong hero to go 1v3, Clockwork, just because he's so hard to bring down with the cogs. Yeah, once he hits level 6, you've got that hook shot, so if a single hero is called out of position, he's just able to jump in, isolate them from the rest of his team, and then bring them down with the Battery Assault DPS. So TYK, deliberately on their 4th ban. They know their tri lane support and the off lane has been picked up. I'm actually just going to quickly log in his team. So 4th ban coming up from TYK. It will be interesting to see who they choose to ban out. 
They know that the offlaner and the triland support's been picked up, so they could start banning out triland heroes such as the Luna that they don't want to deal with, since Luna and Disruptor is a very potent combination, especially if, if they want to clash Tri-V Tri. They're going for a Puck ban, so they're going the other direction, which is banning out mid-heroes. Puck, very good synergy with the Disruptor, just because you could trap him with a Dream Coil, Static Storm, and then the Kinetic Field. If you could catch more than two heroes with the Static Storm, fight's already won. And not only that, you have the Waning Rift, which is one of the best AoE silences in the game, because it does damage as well as silencing for up to three seconds in the Ten massive AoE. Remaining. Very powerful here in a 1v1 matchup. Five seconds remaining. Um, what I want to see from TYK might be um, maybe a Panda or a... Um, Reserve doing, time. Doing what, doing, doing what shut down the Bristleback. Down. Yeah, down. Doom is an excellent uh, pickup, especially since he can get so tanky, and Bristleback relies on long drawn out fights. Doombringer can yeah. get the farm to get really tanky, and since Doom builds tanky items anyway, he says if you want to take it to a long drawn out fight, I could give you that, and Doom was able to beat him down then. If he Dooms the Bristleback, Bristleback can't do anything at all in those fights apart from right click, since it shuts down his passive, so he's not going to get Quill Sprays from the Bristleback passive. He can't Quill Spray or use his, uh, any of his abilities, and he can't even use items, so he's just a glorified melee creep minute. just running around hitting people. Lone Druid banned out, so they're fearing uh, Pandy's Lone Druid, although it has had a questionable win rate, and their series up against uh, Horseman of the Ruckus, they were able to snag a game through win, but in their series up against 2IP, the Lone Druid pickup wasn't as effective as it could have been, but that was mostly due to the fact that the mid lane fell apart. And so Sing2, uh, play, Valerie playing that Invoker, fed a lot of kills over to the Templar Assassin. And so 2IP were able to get the ball rolling with their Lycanthrope carry, and uh, Death Ball push before uh, Lone Druid could get the farm that he needed. Lone Druid, also an excellent counter to Bristleback in lane. So Shadow Shaman picked up once again. So Felfia and Friends sticking with the two support heroes that they know best. Disruptor and the Shadow Shaman. And so you saw how much work they did in the last game. Just with that uh, Static Storm followed up by the Mass Serpent Wards. Able to control the fight. And they glimpse, they glimpse into the Serpent Wards. Yeah, that's a, actually a very strange combination. I don't think I've ever seen that before, but that's very powerful. Especially yeah. if you catch out a core hero. As I think Death Prophet was the one that ate the uh, glimpse into the Mass Serpent Wards, it kills them instantly. Mass Serpent Wards do a huge amount of DPS, but they all focus fire the same target. And you also have to keep in mind, they actually do a small amount of splash damage. And so if you can pin them in place, you actually can spread that DPS out to the rest of the team. TYK, deliberating for their third ban, dipping into their reserve time. They've only got about 30 seconds left, so they're really hesitating what they want to pick up. They haven't picked up their mid yet, or their offlaner. And so they've just gone for two support uh, tri-lane pickups. Whereas uh, over for Felfi and Friends, they picked up their offlane as well, so they have a bit more flexibility with that draft. Since they're a carry hero, they can pick up basically any carry with the Disruptor and the Shadow Shaman. They've gone for Darkseer as the offlaner. He Darkseer also works very well against the Bristleback, just because Ion Shell he could burst down the Bristleback and bring him and uh, bring him down before he could kill you with the Pulse Spray procs. A thing to keep in mind though is Darkseer, he's a questionable offlaner, especially in this patch, just because uh, early teamfight engagements happen a lot faster, and Darkseer needs a lot of levels before he becomes really effective. Since you want level 4 Vacuum, level 4 Ion Shell, and at least 2 points up in wall before he really becomes effective team fighting hero. So that means he's not really going to pick up steam remaining. until about level 10, level 11. And that's a lot of time that you're losing these fights elsewhere. As Bristleback, from level 6 onwards, he becomes a dangerous threat. Hell, even from level 1, if you're not too careful, he'll kill you with those cool sprays. Darkseer, he needs a lot of more levels. Nature's Prophet picked up, so it could actually be a mid or offlane Nature's Prophet with perhaps a tri-lane Bristleback. I wouldn't really be too sure about the effectiveness of a Bristleback tri-lane, just because he needs a lot of levels to be effective as well. And his, yeah, I he's a mid-game oriented hero, so as your one position hero, he does taper off quite effectively. But if you have a mid Nature's Prophet and an offlane Bristleback, you have a lot more flexibility then. They could even decide to sack the offlane completely and have Nature's Prophet jungle. And yeah, we've got the spend pickup. So TYK, very, very powerful aggressive tri lane. We've got the Storm Bolt, uh, followed up by the Grave Chill, as well as the Cold Feet, with a Chilling Touch to provide a huge amount of DPS. If they catch any hero out of position, Visage could follow up with the Grave Chill. Spend runs him with the Warcry, throws up the Hammer, and, and then Ancient Apparition with that Chilling Touch provides a DPS for them to bring them out with right clicks, or Visage follows up with a Soul Assumption. TYK, they want to clash Tri V Tri because they know that if they catch a hero out of position from the Tri Lane from Felfi and Friends, they could bring them down. But Felfi and friends, they are very well coordinated. So we'll see how the Disruptor tri lane fares up against the highly aggressive tri lane coming up from TYK. They want to avoid this tri lane just because they know that with the Visage as well as the AA, chances are they are, they are going to lose in any tri v tri engagement. And we've got a respect ban. Panda's the fifth ban coming out from Felfi and friends. So two respect bans from them. Lone Druid as well as the. Uh, Pandarian Brewmaster, and a Viper Band coming out from TYK. Viper, an incredibly powerful counter pick, 
Now to the Sven, just because Sven is a very slow hero, he's a melee hero as well, so as a one position hero, he relies heavily on uh, either building a BKV to give him that movement speed to be able to lock people in place, to be able to walk over the people and start beating on them, or even a blink dagger. Viper completely negates Sven, since you can throw out that Viper Strike, it goes through BKB, up to an 80% snare, and if Sven isn't hitting anybody like a life stealer, he's not accomplishing anything for your team. It's Five one of the reasons why he falls remaining. off as a hero, but you've got to keep in mind, they've got a lot of AoE presence, you've got Darkseer for the vacuum into wall, followed Reserve up with the Sven Stormbolt, and then he's able to cleave through them with that God Strength, and with that uh, cleave ability he has built in. So a very nasty combination coming out from TYK, if they get the golden experience to be able to pick up enough steam on those two heroes to pull it off. And so Felfi and friends are deliberately now, they're going for that tri uh, hero as their carry. I would like to see a Luna pick up, just because it would synergize very well with the heroes that they have. They've got a lot of pushing presence with the Shadow Shaman as well as Nature's Prophet. Picking up a Luna gives some extra uh, pushing capability with that Luna Blessing. And you also have Disruptor to ensure that Luna will always get two Lucent Beams off and a gank, because that ensures a kill. Bristleback also benefits uh, highly from uh, having Luna around. Because um, Bristleback is able to clear out creeps as well as enemy heroes and drive them back with the Quill Spray. So that uh, remo reduces the number of units in range for the Eclipse. So when Luna drops her Eclipse, it's able to focus down on more uh, select targets. But that's just my thoughts. What would you like to see as the tri uh, carry hero coming out from Felfi and Friends? Um, honestly, I, I think the Nature's Prophet is a bad pick. Mm -hmm. The TYK's tri is just so strong. That, and um, right now, I think Felfi and Friends... Remaining. Because um, Nature's Prophet is quite passive early on, they, they might lose the laning stages. Yeah, that's Radiant true. And pick. they've got a Dragon Knight pickups, a very strong uh, mid game push strat coming out from Felfi and friends. But you have to keep in mind if Nature's Prophet decides to jungle, Visage and Ancient Apparition can easily kill him. Which they happen to roam through. I, I don't think he'll be jungling. I think he'll be um, the offlaner. Off so it's going to be a, a tri lane bristleback, huh? Um, might be a tri lane DK, maybe. I would prefer uh, DK over in the mid lane compared to the Bristleback, just because breathing. Dragon Knight actually offers you very yeah. little uh, until he hits level 6, whereas Bristleback still offers you the Cool Spray and the Nasal Goo. It's very interesting at any rate how they're going to choose to lane this. Road to 2.5k MMR, who sometimes plays the offlaner, picking up the Nature's Prophet, and we've got a Magnus. So a Magnus mid, I don't think I've seen this in Dreamhack, up against potentially the Dragon Knight. Magnus should have a clear superiority over the Dragon Knight, since Dragon Knight wins mid the same way Magnus does, which is spamming his um, AoE nuke. And Magnus' Shockwave, much more cost efficient than the Fire Breath, since it's only 75 mana, uh, 75 or 90 mana at all levels, 90 mana, never mind. Whereas uh, Dragon Breath is up to 120. So I choose through a lot more up to 130, so I choose through a lot more mana over on Dragon Knight. And Magnus also has the uh, skewer, so we had to win rune races, and also to go for a kill attempt over in the Dragon Knight. However, keep in mind, Dragon Knight is very tanky to bring down. With the Dragon's Blood, he has that passive regeneration built in, as well as that superior armor. And so just going to quickly introduce the players from both sides. Felfi over on the Dragon Knight, the tri -Lane carry player, so it could actually be a Dragon Knight uh, tri -Lane. Never mind, he's gone for the traditional mid build. Yeah, so he's going mid. Road to 2.5k MMR, uh, going to the Nature's Prophet. Could actually be jungling, because he's gone for the jungle build with the uh, Ring of Basilius as well as the two clarities. So a very greedy build coming out from them. And Flip Switch, the offlane player, standing in for them. Looks like he could be going offlane with the Disruptor as well as the Shadow Shaman and the Dual Lane. I'm not too sure how Felfi and friends are going to lane this. That Nature's Prophet pick really did hinder their effectiveness of their draft. And they're going in for that early five man uh, group push into the jungle. Over on TYK, uh, Pandy, their. Uh, Captain, and in this case, the mid player over on the Magnus. Golfie, offlane player over on the Darks here. Kuka, Pan, carry player over for TYK over on the Sven. Mickey Mouse, who was the Juggernaut carry in the last game, playing the Ancient Apparition. Looks like he's going for the Chilling Touch build. And Sing2 Valerie over on the Visage. So let's stick in together. We've got an early, very aggressive ward place for that block, as well as providing vision into the jungle for the dire side. And yeah, it looks like uh, Nature's Prophet is going to be jungling. He went for a jungle item. So if you're going for an offlane Nature's Prophet, you always start with the uh, Admiral Bulldog build, which is the boots, as well as a tango. Just because if you have a safety ward, it's impossible to gank the Nature's Prophet in this case, if you play safe. And well, that means that you're able to get a lot of free XP. He's planning to just spam Treants to block the can, maybe, and pull the creep wave, just from that. But then why would he start with the... Why would he start with the Ring of Basilius then? Yeah, Bassi only makes sense if you jungle. It's a pretty bad pickup of the offlane hero. Uh, huh. Don't know. Maybe maybe he's having a, if he's gonna have a tough lane, maybe he can transition to the jungle. Yeah, so maybe he's keeping in mind the fact that the strong the clashing tribe you try. Yeah. Uh, and so Darkseer up against Nature's Prophet. Darkseer will have an absolute ball of a time. 
should be able to control the lane using that ion shell. He could even just ion shell himself, hang around the creep blade, use that to draw him down. You have to respect Nature's Prophet's uh, right clicking power though. But if Darkseid actually plays his cards right, he could actually go for a gank attempt and a tri lane Bristleback. I don't know how effective this will be. Just because Bristleback wants to get as level 6 as soon as possible before he really picks up a ganking present. You can see that Thunderstrike doing so much damage to Valerie. Visage only has 15% magic reduction and zero base armor. He's got the. Ring of protection though. Flip switch actually called out the storm ball. Eats so much damage from that chilling touch. This is uh, the soul assumption flies out. TYK take a very brutal uh, first blood. That, that, that's why these two heroes are the kings of the tri lane. Ancient apparition finds so much damage to that chilling touch. And Visage has that soul assumption. You have to respect the power of the soul assumption. It does so much DPS. Especially with Bristleback at level 1. He doesn't have the Bristleback passive. And so he, he, he ate the full amount of damage coming up from that. So Valerie getting a bit of revenge, saying you killed our team the last time. This time I'm going to take first blood from you again. Over in the bottom lane, road to 2.5 KMMR. Playing very safe up against the Adoxia. Adoxia is choosing to Ion Shell himself. Since he knows that he's up against Lone Druid. Uh, the uh, Nature's Prophet, sorry. So. But he's eating a lot of right clicks in exchange. He's picked up an early uh, Ring of Regeneration. You have to keep in mind, Nature's Prophet actually does right click very hard. So even though he went for a very strange passive uh, build... He's been making it work. Usually it's the offlane hero, Nation's Prophet. You want to start with boots, because if you have a safety ward, it, it becomes impossible to gank you, so long as you have enough map awareness to be able to uh, move away when you see the enemy supports rotating over. Pandy in the mid lane. He's actually being beaten by Felfi. It looks like it's just a clash of pure skill then, just because Magnus has his, should be able to win this lane very easily, since he can spam out the Shockwave more than Felfi can spam out his Breathe Fire. Yeah. But, as well as the fact that Magnus actually has better uh, base damage. Top lane, another kill. Sven able to seal the deal on the Bristleback. Two supports, not able to do all too much. Felfi's friend driven off with a Chilling Touch, as well as the Cold Feet. And was that the exact same combination again? Stormbolt into Chilling Touch into the Soul Assumption? Yeah. I didn't really catch it, I didn't cut the end of it. Yeah, I just it saw... It like the tri -lane's not working out for um, Felfi and friends. You have to keep in mind, Shadow Shaman, he's actually gone for a very defensive build. No points off in the Aether Shock, going for Shackle as well as Hex. Shackle isn't actually that effective against this tri lane because uh, if you don't Shackle this fan, he'll be able to stun you. If you don't Shackle this Visage or the Ancient Apparition, they can just right click you down. Great plays coming off from Flip Switch, actually controlling the Creep Equilibrium to make sure the tower does not beat him immediately. And that means that his Creep Wave is going to get wiped out over here since it doesn't have to range creep. So the next Creep Wave will clash closer to his tower around here. That's actually a great play coming up from Bristleback because it enables him to control the Creep Equilibrium. Even though his support players aren't pulling just because that camp's been warded. Well, it's happening over in the bot lane. Looks like Nature's Prophet is actually doing a pretty good job even though he's up against the Darkseer. He's got 8 CS with 5 denies. He's denying a lot more than the Darkseer. Golfi actually has none. golfie has been taking a lot of harassment from the right clicks coming out from the Nature's Prophet. Since he can't Ion Shell the creep, just because if in a 1v1 situation with the Nature's Prophet, he can just deny the creeps when they get low enough, since Nature's Prophet has an excellent attack animation and hits pretty damn hard. Dragon Knight has boots up already, as well as a bottle with the regeneration rune, so he's having a good time up against Pandy. It means it's difficult for Magnus to go for the skewer back in the tower range. I'm very surprised at that Magnus being beaten by uh, Felfi, just because with the Shockwave, he should be able to easily win this lane. He's been playing very passively. Seems a bit unsure of himself. I would like to see him play a bit more aggressive with the shockwaves and really use it to control the lane. Felfi shouldn't yeah. be getting that free CS that he is right now. Every time he goes in for a CS, you can follow up that shockwave, keep him very low, make him play very passive. He wasn't spamming the shockwave before the 4 minute mark and the rune spawn bottom. What he could have done is keep spamming it, grab the rune. Yeah, TYK, both their mid plays, Kukar playing on the Death Prophet, as well as uh, Pandy over in the bank, just playing very passively on their mids, not spamming out their abilities. It seems counterintuitive, but the mid lane is the only lane where you actually want to spam out your abilities to control the lane. In any other lane, if you're in the side lane, you get flamed out for your allies by saying, what the hell are you doing? But in the mid lane, that's what you want to do. That's one of the reasons why mid is such a strange lane to play. It takes, it's, it takes away from the skills that you learn over in the side lane. Just because things like controlling creep equilibrium uh, don't really apply in the mid lane since you actually want to push the uh, creep equilibrium forward to ensure that you get the rune. So it seems counterintuitive for a lot of Dota 2 players. It's one of the reasons why mid is such a tricky role to play. You see him now spamming up those shockwaves and Falfi, he cops a lot of damage from that. Dragon Knight actually has very low base strength compared for a strength hero just because he gets that survivability from his Dragon's Blood. I think um, Dragon Knight might be able to kill Pandy if Pandy doesn't like, bottle up. Yeah, that's the thing to keep in mind. The instant he hits level 6, 
Uh, he has, with that EDF 1, he has a 400 range, 2.5 second stun. That's a hell of a long CC duration. So he'll be able to get two, three right clicks in to follow up the breathe fire. He can easily bring down Magnus. Magnus does have his RP, but RP with the ever since that nerf after TI2 Dreamhack. Uh, the issue with this, it doesn't do as much damage as it did at level 1, so that really negated uh, Magnus' uh, ability as a mid hero, just because the reason why Magnus was OP mid is his RP did so much damage. The instant he hit level 6, you go in for the skill, you get the RP, you follow up with a shockwave, you get a free kill. Now it's a lot, much more difficult to do that because RP does a lot less damage. I think it does 100 less damage at level 1, and so that's really impaired his uh, solo Genki potential. So now you have to use RP, uh, not for the damage, but for the lockdown, which it still does uh, offer a lot of lockdown. Does no damage right now. Yeah, so it only does 50 damage. Huge enough to him. Another enough to, uh, reason why uh, Warlock, you don't see Warlock mid anymore, is because Chaotic Offering used to do 100 damage uh, when you popped it. Now it actually got rid of the uh, Warlock damage on Chaotic Offering. But it increased the armor of the Golem, so it was a fair trade. Since it helps him scale better into the late game, but nerfs his early game presence. Kukar Peng actually missing a lot of CS up against the tower. He's going for a very standard Sven build, so one point up in stats, one point up in the Warcry, maxing out that Stormbolt. You don't want to get Cleave until later on in the game. Warcry actually offers you a hell of a lot of utility for the rest of your team. Since it gives you four armor per level now with the recent patch, so up to 16 armor on... Especially when you consider the fact that your train line support heroes have very low armor. Mickey Mouse has two over in the Ancient Apparition. And Visage has two only because he has that ring of protection. Visage has zero base armor. Felfi's friend immediately backing away, fearing the power of the Great Chill and the Soul Assumption follow up. So, in terms of CS, Bristleback being heavily shut down. Kuka Peng has almost double the CS that Bristleback does. Doesn't have a point up in the Nasal Goo as well, so he's forced to go for that defensive build. As well as the Shadow Shaman, it only has one point up in the Ether Shock. Ether Shock only hits one target at level one, so you need to have that maxed out as soon as possible if you want to have any kind of uh, AoE DPS. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Arcane Boots picked up over on the Magnus, so he's having an absolutely great game. If he's able to pick up the Blink Dagger in the next three to four minutes, he can start running around, creating a huge amount of space for his team. He's got something, he's got his bottle being crowed back to him. So with the Arcane Boots, he could constantly spam out the uh, Shockwave. I'd like to see him do that a lot more. Keep Dragon Knight so low that Dragon Knight can't think of going for a gank attempt of his own. Unless he's forced to use all his bottle charges. And with the Arcane Boots, you can trade very favorably. Dragon Knight with that Haste Rune actually could be looking to rotate over into the top lane. He's got EDF 1 and enough money to get all his abilities off once with that Haste Rune bottled up. So yeah, Felfi is already rotating over. I hope Magnus called the missing for that because otherwise the trailing could be falling apart for TYK if, if they, they, they don't. A, they have a ward cure. Actually, yeah, that ward block is going to spot him out. That ward was about to wear off as well. Instant ping coming out from Valerie. Bit unfortunate. <coughs> Felfi pops that haste room, runs back in the lane, but while that happened, uh, double damage spawn in the bottom lane. Smoke picked up by uh, the Visage, so we would like to see some support rotations, especially coming out from. Uh, Disruptor and the Shadow Shaman. I guess they've been playing safe just because they want to uh, ensure Flip Switch doesn't get Dove upon again. Whereas Kukar Peng, they don't want to leave Sven alone against the Bristleback for the same reason, just because Bristleback will easily beat Sven in lane if he's not uh, being babysat. Sven actually choosing to go bot for lane, bot, lane. bot lane. Looks like we've got Gangs of the Skill and the double damage in the Shockwave, and they get a very easy kill on Nature's Prophet. He just picked up his Midas though, and so that was great. Uh, unfortunate timing so, from them. <laughs> yeah, if they killed him right before he picked up his, Magnus, uh, his Midas, would have really shut him down. But unfortunately, they were able to deal with it. And you see a sentry ward placed there, the D ward and a safety ward placed by the radiant side. We've got it going in with the uh, Grave Jewel as well as the Chilling Tide for the Storm Bolt. Looks like he'll be taking it for the Soul Sump to the face. Soul Sump should perhaps waste the Kukar Pain, pops the Magic Stick Charges. Flip Switch eats the Cold Fat, Cold Feet. Actually, Breathe Fire gets two. Great rotation coming off from Felfi's Rain. Golfy comes in as well. Isn't able to deal as much. Wrath the Nature instantly kills Ancient Apparition in the back line. Felfi and friends able to take three for the price of one. Pause coming off from his fan. Apparently, he lags. <laughs> Visage disconnected. Bit unfortunate that Visage wasted his Soul Assumption trying to kill off the uh, Disruptor who would have died to one more right click. If he perhaps turned around and Soul Assumption the Bristleback and just thrown under right click, they immediately Soul Assumption Bristleback. They could have killed him before Felfi rotated in. You have to be efficient with your spell, spell usage. In that case, uh, using a Soul Assumption on a 10 HP Disruptor who would have died to one more right click is a bit of a waste. Could have actually made it uh, overcommit to kill that Bristleback and meant that they lost three heroes instead of only perhaps losing two. Golfy could be taking a fall here as well. Uh, there is Hex coming off cooldown. Very fast chicken running away. But with EDF 1 up, Felfi and friends should be able to take the uh, top lane. I like what Pandy's doing in the mid lane. He knows he can't fight this. He, well, he shouldn't be trying to fight this anyway. Looks like he's going in. He's got RP up. He should be trying to push the... Yeah, they should be trying to push the mid lane because they can't fight this right now. Darkseer offers nothing in these engagements. 
Visage, as well as the Ancient Apparition, will fall apart to the damage coming out from them. Magnus is hanging around. He's actually, he might be scouted out by Felfi's friend. Yeah, that, the uh, ward spotted them out. So the Disruptor's hanging around the side. Throws out the Thunder Strike. He's actually running in balls deep. I don't know what he's doing. Dives and throws out the Soul Assumption as well as the Skewer. Where's that RP? Catches out three of the Skewer with the RP. Catches out four. Never mind. This glimpse saves his life. Nature's Prophet falls in the background. Ayo takes a fall with that Grave Jewel. Felfi just turned back into a fat man in the can, so he's running away. He doesn't have EDF, so he does, no, he does not want to deal with this. And Felfi's friend actually saves Magnus' life. Fantastic skewer into RP. He catches out four, kills the Bristleback, and then throws out the Shockwave to ensure that AoE DPS. This is the reason why Magnus used to be such a strong pickup in the post-TI2 Dreamhack era. And wow. That was a bad rotation, but yeah, I thought it work. <laughs> I thought that was a terrible rotation as well, but Pandy with some huge plays, able to completely turn it around. And Darkseer in the bottom lane, able to continue to get his farm. He almost he has his mecha up, so that's a great pickup on the Darkseer. One of the reasons why Darkseer is a very good offlane hero is he's one of those offlane heroes that could go for a very early mech, and that means your team is gonna win any early engagements that you go to. Great micro coming out from rope to 2.5k MMR, recognizes the one the creeps has been Ion Shell. So doing that StarCraft 2 split, making sure that, that creep's hiding in the corner, wearing that dunce cap with the Ion Shell to make sure that the rest of his creeps don't take damage. Midas picked up at about nine at about eleven minutes. He had the money at about nine and a half minutes, but I guess he just didn't want to pick it up until now. So TYK with the reverse polarity, with the Darkseer having a point up and wall, two points up in vacuum, as well as the Mechanism. If they want to group up his five and start pushing, they can do that. And they could start taking some early towers, get that gold lead rolling. TYK having a very good game so far. They're hyper aggressive tri lane, working very well. 3000 EXP lead and about 1200 gold lead. The uh, Shadow Shaman pick, he doesn't have level 6 yet, so he's choosing to max out the Aether Shock. Disruptor's level, uh, almost level 5, so he's no, not going to have the Static Storm. Static Storm is a huge ability in the early stages of the game. Smoke Rotation coming out from TYK. I think the Ward might have swapped them out, but never mind. They weren't having a look at the minimap, so it looks like AO's going to get called out. Where's that Storm Bolt? Kukar Peng runs and throws out the Storm Bolt. Wrath of Sven, Wrath of Jesus. Grape Chill, a one right click from Valerie brings him down. Wrath of Nature flies through. But just barely niggles uh, Valerie and Kukar Peng actually snags the CS as well. So not only does he kill the Shadow Shaman, he steals his ancient his uh, neutral stack. Good plays coming out from him. And that's the advantage of having Sven as your tri lane hero. Hyper aggressive, he has the lockdown which the other two heroes lack. So even though we're questioning the effectiveness of Ancient Apparition and the Visage, the Sven pickup makes it work because you have that guaranteed 2.5 second stun coming out from the Storm Bolt. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. And they should they be able to take a tail one tower off itself. the back of this. The Dyer side can choose to defend. But you always have to keep in mind the Magnus rotation. Magnus is split pushing in the mid lane. Good TP coming out over into tier 2. Recognizing that if he TP'd over to the tier 1, he would be caught out of position. Over, it looks like um, Brown might be called out of position. No, never mind. Falfi's invisible. So he's hanging around saying, guys, we can choose to fight this. I have e EDF1. Looks like he's going for the Shadow Blade. So very old school Dragon Knight build. Gives him a lot of solo pu pushing and solo ganking potential. Just because you have the burst damage, as well as the uh, guaranteed no EDF 1. But there was communication. No Darkseer actually it's surged Kukar Peng, but Kukar Peng didn't do anything with it, so he sort of just sat there in place. Radiance While that's happening, Nature's Prophet in the bot lane, getting some split push going. He knows that uh, he can't really contribute anything to his team fights without his ultimate, so he might as well go for the split push instead. Generate a gold lead so he could use that for his advantage. Blink Dagger picked up on Magnus, so 13 minutes into the game. Pandy with that Blink Dagger. The enemy team does not know that he has a Blink Dagger, so we could be seeing another huge Pandy RP coming out from him. Darkseer rotates over to the bottom lane. Ao called out with the Grape Chill, forced to turn uh, Visage into a chicken. Valerie's going around for a few cheeky right clicks. Kinetic Field drop provide covering fires that blocks off the only uh, route to get to Ao. And he's playing scared. He's picked up his Arcane Boots, so he can get off uh, multiple usage of his abilities. So he'll be able to get off maybe two, three Aether Shocks if he's still alive. Golfie continue to push down the bottom lane. Nature's Prophet and the Darkseer are kind of cancelling each other out as both of them are hanging around, capping the bot lane to make sure the other one can't push in. Kukar Peng eats the level 1 Thunder Strike to the face. He's almost got an armor on Medigian. Fantastic pick up on Sven. Just because Sven's damage actually That's comes over the bottom lane. Darkseer's diving. He's caught out the Sprout. He should have anticipated the Sprout. He just runs away. He's forced to use the mech to say, keep himself alive. If he had a Tango, he actually could have gone for a kill attempt over the Nature's Prophet. He's just going to kill all those creeps instead. Yes. Caught out the Sprout once again. I don't really know what he's doing. Golfi, Golfi, please. What are you doing? <laughs> Looks like Treads picked up by Nature's Prophet. I really disagree with the Treads pick up on NP. If you're an offline Nature's Prophet, you always go for phase, just because Nature's Prophet is a slow hero, and you need the uh, movement speed to reposition yourself. It also gives you that uh, right-click power. His Midas off on cooldown as well. Yeah, Midas is on cooldown as well. Every time your Midas is off cooldown, you don't use it. A kitten dies. So please, kids, save those kittens. Use your Midas. <laughs> 
Magnus hanging around Pandy has Blink RP, so he's standing by. Visage families are up as well, so if they take a team fight, Bristleback called out the Grave Chill, Shockwave cops it, catches out Disruptor as well. Bird drop from one solo assumption flies out. Full spray actually kills it off. Engine apparition, ice blast might seal it. They'll never mind the whiffs. A lot of investment for very little reward, but they should be able to take the tail one tail off the back of that. Kuka Pang. Shadow Blair actually picked up by Felthy, so they could look to fight this. Sven with a level 4 Storm Bolt as well as God Strength. You don't want to fight with Sven. He can do so much damage if he has that room to do that. You also have to keep in mind the late game. You have the uh, Empower as well as the Cleave. So Sven already being empowered up. Dyer able to take mid as well as bot. So great split push coming off from Felthy and friends. That's the reaction you want to do. Vanguard picked up by Bristleback. I would have liked to see him go for a Mechantum, especially considering the fact that it's a very late Vanguard. If you don't get Vanguard the first 10 minutes, the effectiveness is high, is highly limited. Just because uh, the more damage people get, uh, Vanguard actually doesn't give you as much damage block. The damage block is uh, only really works for the first 20 minutes. Afterwards, people just do more right-click damage, so it's better actually just to stack armor. So Sange actually gives you more HP than the uh, Vanguard. And picking up something like, like an Armlet Medigium will actually give you more overall DPS, as well as EHP. For the first uh, 11 seconds of you activating Armlet Medigium, you actually get a net increase in HP. So after 11 seconds, that's when you start to take the, gen the degeneration. Kukar Peng rotating over with the two supports. Warcry throws out the Storm Bolt. They run in front of him. Chilling Touch was the Cold Feet. Soul Assumption to the face, and he takes a fall. You saw how much damage those Cool Sprays did, though. Sing to Valerie, as well as Mickey Mouse at half HP from those three Cool Sprays that were popped. So you have to keep in mind, Bristleback does output a lot of DPS, especially if you hit him from behind. Dragon Knight using the Shadow Blade to pick up the Regeneration Rune, so some Gorilla Warfare coming up from him. He doesn't have enough mana to pop EDF, or to use any of his abilities though, so at that point all he has is a right click. Edge Apparition, Ice Blast, AO forced to pop out of Serpent Wars defensively, takes the fall, glimpses him back in the Serpent Wars, and Pandy doesn't have Skewer, Pandy's gonna take a fall, great play, he turns around, gets a Spike Shockwave to get a kill over and disrupt it. Golfy caught up in the Dragon Tail, he might be taking a fall. Shadow Blade pops, he gets one last right clip with the Shadow Blade, picked up his treads. Very messy engagement. They kill uh, the two cores over in TYK in exchange for their two supports. Felfi and friends very happy with that. EDF 2 pop. Felfi's friends gonna try to chase down uh, Mickey Mouse, but Sven's hanging around in the high ground, waiting for him to come up. Bristleback's also there. Valerie, I don't know what the hell he's doing, he should be back in the hell away. He's in behind enemy lines right now. And Nature's Prophet, he's knocking on your door. Continue to niggle away at those towers. That's the reason why he's such a pain in the ass. Ancient Apparition Ice Blast flies out to scare him off. But that's an Ancient Apparition Ice Blast he could be using in ganks or fights. Would like to see them try to go for these pushes over in the mid and bot lane. They need to punish the Nature's Prophet, but they don't have enough uh, global presence or these global ganks to be able to punish it. Yeah. Having someone like a Storm Spirit would work. But the only hero they can use to effectively counteract the Nature's Prophet is the uh, Magnus. But if you're forced to use RP on the Nature's Prophet, then you're going to lose these fights. Shadowblade Initiation coming up from Falfi, he's going to catch out Kukar Peng, stuns him up, turns into a chicken, Static Storm, locking in place with the Shackles, while the Breed Fire is going to seal the deal, never mind, just right clicks him down. Support hero is nowhere near, so Kukar Peng takes a fall. Bit unfortunate, he's going for the BKB, so liking the uh, item build coming out from Sven. First the Armlet Medigian to provide you that DPS as well as the survivability, then the uh, BKB to ensure that you can't get locked down. Once he picks up a BKB, Felfi and friends, the only way they could counteract Sven is with right clicks coming out from the Dragon Knight, as well as from the Bristleback with its Quill Spray. Other than that, they can just cry and get beaten down by Sven, as he outputs so much damage with the Armlet as well as the uh, God Strength active. He's only about 300 with both of those active. Throw in the uh, Empower coming out from Magnus. And you've got a huge, you've got some massive cleave damage coming out. Nature's Prophet going for the Maelstrom as his first big item, so he's going for that split pushing build. Would have liked to see a Shadow Blade from him, but Maelstrom at the same time isn't a bad pickup. Ancient Apparition Ice Blast scouts out the Roshan. So Nature's Prophet's going to be playing that secondary DPS role, alongside the Bristleback as well as the uh, Dragon Knight, so Tricore v Tricore. Darkseid is very happy with this, since if he's able to pick up an Aghanim Scepter, he could turn your momentum against you. He's got two points up in his wall now, so Darkseid has reached his peak. At this point, if, he, if they choose to fight, TYK have a decisive advantage, as they have a mecha up, they have RP and blink, and they have the wall. Wall drop preemptively. That was a very questionable wall. I guess it scares them away, so Felfi and friends are forced to back away and give away this tower. Blink they get picked up, however, on Shadow Shaman, they have that initiation. EDF 2 pop, where is that um, RP? Actually catches up three to the Static Storm. Ice Blast thrown, Ancient Apparition takes a fall, Felfi Tsukida, Kukar Pen, caught up the war trap, fantastic war trap by him. 
Still hanging around. Vacuum actually gets free. Goes in for a right click. Soul assumption again. Kills over the uh, Shadow Shove in the background. Felfi goes over the Fire Breath. Misses everybody. Pandy's going to catch him out with the Shockwave. And where's that Skewer? Goes in with the Skewer. One more right click. And he takes a fall. Great fight coming out from TYK. But while that's happening, uh, Road to 2.5k MMR. Nature's Prophet says, What's up? He takes your tower and he backs away. Felfi and friends. That was a mistake by Felfi. Friends. Yeah, they should have backed away. The instant they saw the wall pop, I don't know why they thought they could fight this. As you've got the Blink RP, the God Strength, as well as the Armlimit Medigian and the Mecha. That's true, they were able to give a Nature Prophet time to get to take those towers, so they're trading with fights for towers, which is the way you want to play when you have a Nature Prophet, I suppose. If they completely backed away, the Nature Prophet wouldn't be able to take that free tattoo. So Felfi and friends, they're playing for the ultra late game. They know that with the Nature's Prophet, Rat Dodo, he's able to take another free tattoo tower in the bottom lane. They know that they always have to be wary of that split push coming out. Would have actually preferred to see Nature's Prophet go for something like a Necro Book, especially since he's playing that split pushing role. Would have given a lot more split pushing presence, or even if he chose to go for a Desolator's first item, that would have been a better split pushing item than the Maelstrom. But nonetheless, it does give him a bit more AoE DPS in these fights, I suppose. Boots of Travel's picked up by the Darkseer, so he's second Nature's Prophet's shit. He's going to be able to TP in using the Boots of Travel. Would like to see a Blink Dagger picked up on him, especially with, since you have the uh, Blink RP. So Blink RP, follow up with the wall and the Vacuum to Storm Bolt. Now, TYK can instantly win these fights with that huge Wombo combo. They love their Wombo combos. Let's see how this one fares. This is more of a TI2 uh, Dreamhack era. Our Wombo combo since you've got the Sven Magnus combination with the Darkseer. Visage and the Ancient Apparition, they've always been pretty good heroes. Ancient Apparition, not so much. It was the Chilling uh, Touch buff that pushed them into the combative scene. But that's a dash of the new school. Magnus picks up the Drums of Endurance. Very good pickup on him. Gives him the stats he needs as well as the movement speed. Valerie, he's been picking up his farm where he can. He actually looks like he's going for the Aghanim Scepter, just because he has so much gold on him, he doesn't have to go for the Mechanism. So having those three birds up is a critical factor in these fights. Just because you've got the extra DPS coming up from the Familiars, as well as that extra bird drop. I think TYK is a bit of an, on, a, on a timer right now. They need to make something happen with the team fights they have. Yeah, Felfi and friends definitely have the superior late game lineup. Although, you do, you always have to respect the, uh, um, um, great, um, the Empower into the Sven. So I guess maybe TYK think that with the Mag Sven combination, they have the late game secured. Just because Kukar Peng's had a fantastic start. He's about halfway to his BKB. He should be able to pick up in about two, three more minutes the rate he's farming. He's got three points on his cleave now, so that in conjunction with the uh, empower means his fan hits like an absolute Mack truck. Also, critting and cleaving that everywhere. Shadow Blade initiation coming off from Felfi. He wants to catch out Pandy, but Pandy has a blink. Actually, Kinetic Field instantly blinks away. Great reaction from Pandy. Playing safe. Soul Assumption flies in the background. They're able to kill Disruptor at the back of that. Ancient Apparition Ice Blast catches out the um, Bristleback. Shutting down his HP regeneration. Wow, great plays coming up from TYK. They're really punishing Felfi and friends for going for that yeah, split push in the build. The oh, they're going for Roshan. That's a good thing to do since they know that uh, Felfi and friends can't actually stop them if they go for a Roshan attempt. Since you've got the Visage Familiars providing flying vision, so they can scout it out any uh, potential ganking paths they take. <laughs> Tail 1 Tower's about to fall. Kukar Peng is going to smack it down with a double damage run. Doesn't even have arms. Dyer has fortified. It's he's hitting 200 right now without his armlet and god strength active. With those two active, he's hitting about 400. Huge deeps attack. coming up from Sven. No I think DK went for the wrong item. He got, um, I don't think he should have got the Shadow Blade. Yeah, he hasn't been to make the Shadow Blade work at all just because Dyer's they've been forced into these engagements. Attack. Shadow Blade doesn't offer you all too much when you're fighting 5v5. If he went for a BKB, he could stand tall in these fights, get off his abilities that way. Glimpses back to Sven, but there's no follow-up, so that was a wasted glimpse. Felfi's friend, I guess he's being a bit, he's, he must be feeling pretty bored. He's been play, had to play very passive since they lost their try lane. So just a cheeky glimpse coming out from him. He's got the 15 second cooldown though. But while that's happening, Nature's Prophet looks like he's going for the Necro Book. So he's continuing to split push him in the top lane. Gonna force a rotation from Darkseer. This is a huge window coming out for Felfi and friends, because you don't have the warm vacuum combination. But they should be able to take a uh, tier 2 tower bot, then they're going to retreat. Golfies that would completely defend the split the push. The bottom tower doesn't even have arms to defend Kuka his... Peng, he's going to get his BKB breathe. off the back of that. Dyer's Never mind, the, he doesn't get that last hit, but he's almost got his BKB. When Sven has that BKB up, that's when you know you should be afraid. The, the three cores over on the Dyer side can't do a goddamn thing against Sven with BKB up, especially with that uh, Blink RP as well as the Vacuum. Where's that Vacuum? He's just interrupted. Never mind, just those off mana. 
Maybe he recognized too late like, the vacuum actually interrupts TPs, otherwise it would have been a kill. Bit unfortunate, but Nature's Prophet, he's very happy with that. He gets away for free. Magnus, he's been saving up his gold. Will be interesting to see what item he chooses to go for. T uh, TYK might actually choose to go for a refresher Magnus, just because they do like to go for those team fight wombo combos. But he could go for something like Shiva's guard, that would also provide a lot more utility for his team. Because you have that AoE snare to hold people in place for Spandavid to beat people down. Also means that if you do decide to go for the refresher orb, uh, after that, with the intelligence coming out from the Shiva's guard, you'll actually have enough mana to get to use your ult twice, and then follow up with your uh, shockwave. Since if he goes for a refresher orb right now, he won't have enough mana to be able to use both. Oh, he'll just barely have enough mana to use both, so he can't use any of his other abilities. Looks like he's going for a BKB. Very safe pickup from him, as Magnus with a BKB is also something you have to respect. Just because he actually outputs a fair amount of DPS himself with the Empower, as well as the constant threat of shockwaves coming at you. BKB picked up. He actually instantly blinks himself before he gets uh, glimpsed. So great play coming out from him. Glimpse was wasted by Disrupting. He blinks away immediately. Prophet should be pushing bottom right now. Yeah, Prophet has been playing. He's been making some questionable plays. He's finally picked up his Necro book. He was doing fine early game, but now I think he's a bit lost because um. They don't, they don't have any vision on the map, mm -hmm. so one of the things to support in Trophy and Friendship thing, thing they should do is put put more wards on the map, maybe, maybe around the mid lane. So yeah, they've got one over here, but these are both very defensive wards. Felfi and friends have been playing scared from the uh, Wombo coming from TYK. Wrath of Nature thrown out. Panties hanging around, looks like they're going in for a gank. Right, split rotation, goes in with the Thanks on misses, Storm hit, Thumble hits three, two caught up with the Ice Blast, Serpent will drop defensively, where's that RP? Doesn't even need it, throws out a shockwave and smacks him down, Kuka Peng smacking bitches down with that BKB and God's Strength, Solar Sumption flies out, he might actually be taking a fall with the damage coming off the wards, never mind, turns around, smacks down Nature's Prophet, they take five for one, mech popped a bit too late, but they don't really care. Decisive victory coming out from TYK. I don't know why Disruptor tried to initiate on that. Just because he actually missed everybody with the Static Storm. He was able to catch out Magnus for a few seconds, but they weren't able to capitalize off that. And Shadow Shaman forced to drop his wards defensively. I think he trapped himself because he was initiated upon. That vacuums the Storm Bolt called out three. Huge AoE presence coming out from Sven. Because he was able to stun three members for two seconds with that Storm Bolt. Bought his team time to finish off the Shadow Shaman and they could group up. He could pop his God Strength and start beating on people. Yule Scepter picked up by uh, the Ancient Apparition, the very good pick up on him, just because it ensures that he could get solo Cold Feet procs. You activate Cold Feet, you Yule Scepter them, and then when they drop to the ground, they're instantly frozen. It means they don't take the damage from it, however, it's a great way to be able to ensure that you get solo 4 second uh, disables on them. Blink in from the Shadow Shaman, vacuum the wall, where's the wall? Wall's been placed, no vacuum, Sven actually takes the fall, Valerie might be taking fall as well, he's caught up in the Shackle, and he's beaten down. TYK perhaps over uh, staying there. Welcome, Surge over and to keep him alive. Golfy TPing out. Never mind, he's glimpsed. He's gonna be taking a fall. Golfy and friends, and we get three kills for the price of none. They do lose their tattoo mid. But TYK overextending their welcome. They should have backed away the instant they saw those heroes respawn. But good trades for both teams. In terms of EXP, 7,500 EXP lead and 2,000 gold lead for TYK. Is starting to go in favor of. Now, uh, Felfi and friends with the fact that they were able to take those trades. But the reason why this is so important is it means that Ancient Apparition, he has a level 2 Ice Blast. Level 2 Ice Blast is very critical for the AA, especially when the other support heroes are only don't have their level 2 ultimate. Shadow Shaman going for the Agnum Scepter again. They're grouping up for a push on the tier 2. They should be able to take this, but at the same time, they do have the uh, RP up on Magnus. So with Kukar Peng, with his God Strength up, they actually could go for a kill, but never mind. The tower's falling too quickly with the Necro Book as well as the Mass Serpent Wards. He goes up for the Deny, but unfortunately wasn't able to get it. Necrobook's actually a great pickup uh, against the uh, TYK just because they have so much AoE presence, but so the instant the BKB wears off a Sven, he actually can kill himself with the cleave if he uh, hits, kills the Necro 3 image. So it means he has to kill the Necrobook images during his BKB duration. Those familiars might be taking a fall. Yeah, they both go down instantly, so Valerie without the familiar support. Huge loss for him. He'll have them up in 35 seconds, but you never want to feed the Visage familiars unless you absolutely have to just because they offer you so much uh, utility and support. He almost has his Agnum Scepter though, so he'll soon be having three familiars. Great pickup on Visage. Shadow Shaman actually almost has his uh, Agnum Scepter as well. Looks like Shiva's Guard picked up by the Darkseer. Would have preferred a Blink Dagger just because it gives him that immediate jump initiation. So he can jump and vacuum people when Kukar Peng throws out the Storm Bolt and then follow up with the wall. But nonetheless, Shiva's Guard, very good pickup. We'll be seeing, interesting to see what Magnus chooses to go for as the next item. He's got 2k. 
The three cores over in TYK farming very well in terms of net worth. Nature's Profit's the only one that's been keeping uh, up with the cores over on TYK. Sven actually been beaten by the uh, Dragon Knight, but that's because he Dragon Knight has that flash farming capability with the Breathe Fire. Sven has been aiming for fights a lot. He's been fighting a lot more. He's finally building towards that Chrysalis. A lot of the mistakes I see uh, Sven's doing pub games is I like to go for Chrysalis as a first big item. And you always want to build the uh, BKB as your first major item just because it gives you the 10 second duration to actually attack people. Then you build towards your crit, especially with the Empower as well as the Cleave. So that's 100% cleave coming out with the greater cleave, 115% uh, uh, cleave coming out from Sven. So if one of those hit uh, crits, you can actually one-shot the entire team as you've got the RP and the vacuum to hold people in place. So with the Armlet Medigginus' uh, early game pickup, giving him that survivability and DPS in the early stages of the game. Since Armlet Medigginus works very well with God Strength, it actually gives you an extra 25 strength. And since God Strength is multiplied off your ba uh, base damage, which is based off your strength, Actually provides a lot more extra damage for his ultimate. Also gives him 475 HP from the strength that it gives you. So it makes you tankier. Very good pickup on Sven, especially if you're able to pick up your uh, pick it up very early, so it doesn't delay your huge core, your big core items, which is your Blink Dagger or your uh, BKB, depending on what build you're going for. And he's getting a few points up in his Warcry. You have to keep in mind, Warcry gives you a huge amount of armor, 16 armor at level 4 to your entire team, as well as the uh, movement speed. Incredibly important ability, just because 16 armor is a hell of a lot for your support heroes, it makes them much tankier to Dragon Knight, as well as the right clicks coming out from Bristleback and the Nature's Prophet. The longer they're alive, the more uh, support they can provide you in these fights, especially since they have so much CC. Felfi's picked up level 3 EDF, so he's reached the peak of his uh, team fighting presence. He's got that BKB up. So with Shadow Blade and BKB, he actually outputs a fair amount of DPS on his own. Looks like Golfie's been called out for a gank, but with that surge, he's got nothing but fair. Nature's Prophet. Necro 2 actually choosing to go for a sheep stick instead of upgrading to a Necro 3. Very interesting build coming up from him. Would have liked to see him finish that Necro 3, then go towards your sheep stick, just because your Necro 3 images actually feed you 200 gold for each one that you lose. So upgrading them as soon as possible become a critical factor, just because you're less likely to feed them then. They actually do feed a surprising amount of gold. Always something to keep in mind. However, the the uh, Warrior Necronomicon th uh, 3 actually deals 600 pure damage when he dies. So even though he gives the it gold, you can actually kill place. people by that if they're not aware of that fact. Bot lane, he just barely gets to kill the Iron Shell DPS, but Felfi, he's knocking on your door. Ice Blast is going to scare him off. And Golfi is running over to try to defend the mid lane. And the top lane, they have a window of opportunity to go for a push now since Nature's Prophet is down. He doesn't have buyback. Or he does, but he's unwilling to expend it. Think, keep in mind, Nature's Prophets, you always want to have money for buyback. So a situation like this, when they're pushing your top lane, you can buy back up, uh, split pushing the bottom lane. Shadow Shaman gonna get locked in place. Never mind. I was able to blink. Glimpse saves uh, Pandy, so good plays coming out from both teams. I actually neutralize the advantage either side got. He almost has his uh, Agnum Scepter, but he's only got level 1 Mass Serpent Wards. So his wards are basically food, since they're not doing enough DPS to be able to kill people during the lockdown duration he has. Chrysalis up on Sven, so with his level 2 god strength as well as his armlet and BKB pop with the uh, Empower coming out from Magnus, he's going to be hitting about 400, 500, he's critting for 700 in an AoE. If you lock people in place for a reverse polarity, all three, of the, all whatever hero he traps in place will die just because of the sheer amount of damage coming out from Sven. The fact that his, he's actually cleaving more damage than he deals himself is also a huge factor, especially against a hero like a Bristleback. So you could uh, choose to hit the Shadow Shaman and then the cleave damage will actually kill off the Bristleback. Since the cleave damage will be based off the armor of the target that you first target. So if you target, say, the Shadow Shaman, since he has the lowest armor value, he's going to deal more overall DPS to the rest of the team than if he chose to right-click the uh, Dragon Knight or the Bristleback. So the thing you have to keep in mind is the reason why Kunka... Uh, when, once you have that uh, Shadow Blade and Chrysalis, or Daedalus, you always want to initiate on the creep, just because they have lower armor, armor than heroes. So that means the splash damage coming out from the cleave will actually hit, will be based off the armor of the creeps. So you're going to deal more overall splash damage than if you initiate on the hero. So if you get to initiation over in Pandy, this could be a great kill for them. The dice, the TYK can't respond in time, and Pandy takes a fall. Caught in a position, underestimating the power of the Shadow Blade initiation coming out from Dragon Knight. He should have blinked out with the instant he could. He's been very good with his, rea with his reflexes so far. But Dragon Knight able to get a free kill. That delays TYK's push for a minute. So that means that they have to place to get him back away. Oh, there's a Roshan. There's a free Roshan for Felfi. Yeah, that's actually a very important thing to keep in mind. Who do you think will be picking up the Roshan in this case? Do you reckon it'll be Bristleback or do you think it'll be Felfi? Well, even the Nature's Prophet, come to think of it. 
I think I think Selfie would be picking it up. Because the issue with Aegis on Dragon Knight is when you die during EDF, you don't respawn with EDF up, and Dragon Knight without EDF can't actually do anything in fights. But, but you wouldn't want to aim at the bristle bag in the first place. That's true, although I would have liked to see it on the Nature's Prophet, because that means he could ensure that split push. Since you have to kill him twice, it's difficult enough to kill him on his own. He's picked up a sheep he stick. Has the sheep stick. Yeah, so huge pickup for him. The instant BKB wears off his fan, he can turn him into a pig. He can also initiate on the Ancient Apparition and pick him off solo. Since you've got the 3.5 second hex duration, all the uh, Necronomicon images are beating on you. Also can go in over on the Visage, but Visage has a Familiars, so it isn't a, as critical effect to initiate to uh, sheep up the Visage as it is the uh, Ancient Apparition. Just because, well, it's, it is nice uh, disabling the Soul Assumption. The familiars do a lot more work as well in the later stages of the game. Regeneration rune. Looks like a boots of travel picked up by uh, Pandy. So he sold his arcane boots. He wants to deal with the rat dodo coming out from Nature's Prophet. Great way to deal with it. Sven almost is enough for a Daedalus. So that's going to be a phenomenal pickup for him. If he could get one big crit cleave off, he could single handedly win a fight off the back of that. One of the reasons why Sven is such a terrifying carry. He sold his TP scroll, so he's almost got enough for that Daedalus. Could actually regret that decision if Nature's Prophet continues to split push the way he's doing. So, uh, TYK know that right now they have to take a fight. They need to win a fight and then take Rex before Nature's Prophet uh, reaches the tier 3. Just because otherwise you'll be to keep niggling away. So, they have a small window of opportunity right now to initiate. Glimpse back uh, Mickey Mouse, but they're not able to initiate off that. Pandy playing very patiently. He's winning around, throws out the RP. Uh, the uh, Shockwave, sorry, to get a bit of damage and as well as a bit of scouting. Ice Vortex providing vision to the high ground. Top and Felfi and friends, they're playing this perfectly. They're all splitting up to make sure that you can't get an RP initiation on more than one hero. Magnus says TP to defend. So TYK are backing away now. You see Felfi's friend immediately forcing himself forward to get that uh, glimpse initiation. Good card peg, might have to pop his BKB. Never mind. They can turn around and fight this. They have RP, they have they have walled that BKB. God strength is pop. Gets a kill over Felfi's friend, instantly killing one right click from Sven. He says, bitch, please get on my level, throws out the storm bolt and just smacks him down. However, that's a BKB wasted in exchange for a Disruptor. They don't have the RP initiation. Wall's been popped to scare them away. They could be taking a free tier 3 tower off the back of this. EDF 3 popped by Felfi. He has his Dragon Tail. They should back up. Never mind. They get one kill, two kills. That wall in vacuum. Kukar Peng takes a fall, however, from the DPS coming out from the Mass Serpent Wards as well as Felfi. Hex over Valerie. He's going to be taking a fall. Ice Blast whiffs on everything. Ancient Apparition is no win. And Golfi TPing at home. He gets interrupted by the EDF uh, Dragon Tail. Golfi might be taking a fall as well. Surges himself, running to safety. Never mind. He might actually make it. Felfi doesn't have enough mana to chase. I don't know what the Ancient Apparition wasn't in that fight. He should have been there. He could have provided a lot more DPS. Uh, Sven got a huge crit on uh, the Bristle Bag. Yeah, that, that popped him before he could do anything. You have to keep but in mind. I don't think TYK should have fought that. Yeah, they should have backed the instant they uh, mag They knew they didn't have Magnus or the Ancient Apparition. Mm -hmm. After they killed Felfi's friend, they should have backed away because they knew that they did what they came for. They didn't have to BKB up on Sven, which is a critical factor. BKB is actually going down to eight seconds now. Wait, it looks like he's going for Mask of Madness or a Helm of the Dominator. Both are great pickups on Sven. Mask of Madness could actually work in this case because you have the initial the Blink RP coming out from uh, Magnus as well as the Vacuum coming out from Darkseer. One thing I haven't actually noted is Darkseer is a phenomenal counter to the Dragon Knight because if Dragon Knight gets caught out in the wall, you're not you're giving them a very tanky illusion that you're not going to get a DPS down very quickly. That also has the EDF3 uh, Ayaskadi buff, so Dragon Knight is a free Ayaskadi from EDF3. If Darkseer catches you in the wall, they now get, have that uh, free Ayaskadi that they can use to snare people. And not only that, Dragon Knight's going from the Soul Karas, so when you go through the wall, you actually propagate that illusion. The illusion propagates all the auras that you have, so you're giving them a free Assault Karas as well. One of the reasons why Darkseer is a fantastic counter to uh, people that carry such as the Dragon Knight as well as the Spectre, just because he's able to steal the uh, aura and uh, effects that those carriers build. The Spectre usually builds for, towards the Radiant. Dragon Knight's probably the better uh, here to catch up with the wall, just because he's very tanky. And he usually builds tanky items as well. Flip switch, actually, bit of a whiff coming out from Pandy. Completely missed that blink skewer. <laughs> Pandy, please. Could have been a great kill, but nonetheless, he's actually glimpsed back. Felfi and friends could be looking to fight this. Oh. AO TP is out, uh, blinks out. BOT in from Golfrey. Really want a blink dagger on him. That would give him so much. He's got a blink dagger up now, so they have so much more uh, team fight presence, as well as a gem of insight. Uh, gem and true side, sorry. So they're going to use that to de ward as well as to prevent any Dragon Knight initiation. So Dragon Knight no longer can just walk up and get that cheeky uh, Dragon Tail in. 
Felthy and friends playing very defensively. Nature's Prophet is over in the bottom lane, so he's the only one uh, providing map presence. That uh, Aegis Demon actually is going to be reclaimed in a minute. So if TYK know this, if they have their timing down, they actually could just wait for it to wear off and then try to go for a fight. Nature's Prophet continues to split push over in the bottom lane. He's got a lot of gold up on him. If he dies, he can always buy back into a fight. Ancient Apparition Ice Blast just to shut down that push. And he instantly uh, TPs over to the top lane. Even the Golfie blinked in with that uh, vacuum to try and interrupt it. Wasn't able to lock him in place for long. Ancient Apparition looks like he's going for the Sheep Stick of his own. Very farm uh, support on both teams. TYK as well as... Uh, Falfi and friends. Disruptor's the only one that's pretty poor. He's going towards an Aghanim Scepter of his own. If he could get Static Storm off before a Sven can pop up his BKB, he could actually prevent him from locking, from uh, popping his BKB. Shadow Shaman has his Aghanim Scepter. Probably will be building a BKB of his own. Just because it locks down, uh, mitigates a lot of damage coming out. He could also go for the Ghost Scepter to prevent himself from being beaten up by Sven. Aegis the Immortal is going to be reclaimed. So it's a wasted Aegis for Felfi and friends. However, they did buy them space. A Soul Caress up on Felfi. So he's going to be hitting very quickly. He hits like a truck. His regeneration from the Age of the Immortal instantly cancelled by the Ice Blast. Surprising that the Ancient Apparition chose not to go for the Aghanim Scepter. as a 17 second debuff uh, with the Aghanim Scepter upgrade. It's quite critical. Visage looks like he's going towards the Sheep. Like he almost has it. Looks like he chose not to go for the uh, Aghanim, Aghanim Scepter upgrade on the Visage. I think Bambi would be rolling over right now if he saw this. Visage without the Nags upgrade. And he's disapproving. Yeah, he's shaking his head thinking, what the hell is this? No Meepo, no Aghanim on Visage. TYK, please. But um, I think I think the um, the ducks here should be going for the hex and then the the Vassal is going for the Aghanim scepter because right now the right now they're doing the opposite. Yeah. I don't know what Darkseer is getting. Dark, although Aghanim scepter on Darkseer is a very good pickup, especially when you're up against a Dragon Knight as well as a Bristleback, since you're providing two very tanky uh, illusions through the wall. Bottom. 140 DPS. But he he hasn't been hitting the walls. Um. That Great. Yeah, his walls have been very questionable. He keeps dropping them preemptively. And he could have gone for Abby. Only catches out the Shadow Shaman. Very unfortunate for TYK. They'll take it though. Felfi pops his BKB. Kuka Peng pops his. There's not a man fight. Shadow Shaman buys back into the fight. Felfi and friends take a lot of damage. Stormbolt flies up and he's been cutting around. Kuka Peng and Kitan actually takes the fall. BKB wall off. He actually kills himself. Top Barracks is being pushed in by Felfi and friends. And Nation Prophet takes a free top uh, racks. Delphi and friends actually might have just won the game off the back of that fight. Visage forced to buy back, so that's delaying his Sheepstick further. Goal 3 can't go 1v1 against the next Prophet, as he has that Sheepstick, he's actually out DPSing him down. He's got a TP out, where is that Vacuum? Vacuum's him in place. Still channeling, Delphi kills Mickey Mouse in the background. And wow, Delphi and friends might have actually just won the game off the back of that fight, because they took a free Rax, able to wipe TYK. RP was wasted on the Shadow Shaman, who instantly brought back. And they still held on to their Rex throughout all of that. Where was the Adoxia initiation? He had Blink up as well. He should have blinked, gone to the vacuum, then into the wall. And, and then into the, um, the RP. Yeah, very really questionable plays. He had a window of opportunity when he could have blinked and gone in that uh, vacuum into the RP, then follow up with the wall. But instead, Pandy whiffed it, only got the RP on one. The Shadow Shaman, who had buyback up, was completely wasted. And I think Felfi and friends might have actually won the game off that fight, since you've, you're one Rex down against a Nature's Prophet split push. They've got nowhere to counteract it. 3,000 gold lead in favor of Felfi and friends now. And EXP is completely even. <coughs> Sorry, go on. Oh no, you keep going, I was actually done. Uh, so, sorry, it's just that TYK, um, I mean, they make, they make their draft work early game, but it's just the draft is so much harder to pull off compared to F and F. Yeah, that's definitely true. Every, like, they, they needed a perfect combo, whereas mm. F and F, you know, they, they have so much more room for error, and they can do the split push as well. It's sort of like what you guys did against uh, 2IP. 2IP had a much more uh, difficult to execute yeah. draft. All you guys had to do is split push, since 2IP were forced to go into these death ball 5 on 5 fights. You guys had a lot more split pushing capability, with uh, Ghoulie on the Weaver as well as you over on the... Uh, Ember Spirit, so you two can continue to split push, create farm that way, secure the late game, and then go for the win. Looks like it's the same case with Elfie and friends, recognizing they can't clash 5-on-5, uh, five five, since the wombo combo from TYK is too strong. So they're playing to the strengths of their lineup, which is to split push, to delay pushes for as long as possible, and then to secure the late game. Ayo blinks in, gets a hex over on Kukarpeng, Felfi's gonna initiate in, Static Storm drops to Kukarpeng, he pops his BKB, turns around and Felfi's friend, actually switches targets to flip switch, what's happening, Felfi gets a free kill on 2, Magnus, as well as the uh, Ancient Apparition Fallen, Kukar being kited around, being kited by the EDF3, he takes a fall. 
That's the issue with Sven, as your one position hero, he gets kited very easily, especially with his BKB duration dropping to about 4-5 seconds now. Yeah, 6 second BKB up on him, so the instant it wears off, he's been kited, the nasal goo, as well as the uh, attacks coming up from EDF3 Dragon Knight. Free Ayaskadi up on him. Felfi's been playing phenomenal. And the four stuff up on Disruptor, keeping him alive. He's he was able to stay alive for the entirety of that fight. Just he can four stuff himself when Sven initiates on him. Sven doesn't have a gap closing ability. He buys back, actually gets a great vacuum wall. So Felfi uh, might be forced to back away. Although they did bait out the buyback, so they should be happy with that. They should really b back away now. Just in case. Roshan's back up. Yeah, so they're gonna take a free Roshan. Oh, they might actually get Nature's Prophet here. Yeah? Where's the bird drop? Where's the vacuum? Come on, Sing2. Bird, bird, bird drop! Soul Assumption! Bird. Where's the bird drop? Bambi! <laughs> Bambi would be flipping in his grave right now. Mm. He's probably trolling them in chat over in Twitch saying, what the hell is this? Maybe he should co cast this instead of me. <laughs> yeah, if he didn't have such bad ping at home, he probably would be co casting this. He'd just be flaming them for all he's worth. Now he dropped the birds. What the hell is that, Visage? Why didn't you drop them earlier? Visage, please. It's okay. They still got the kill, so it's yeah, it's not too bad. That's true. I think the situation in the, in the team right now should be quite tense because the game is quite close. Yeah, very close game. So TYK should be quite panicked. Felfi and friends. I know that even if they do lose this game, they're still guaranteed to move on to the next stage. Whereas TYK, if they don't actually, if they get two woed, recursion might actually be the sniper that's spot. So they do have to keep this in mind, depending the on the scoreboards. Nature Prophet buys back, AO blinks in, actually feeds his life away, drops his serpent once over. RP catches out only one, Pandy, what? He gets a skewer. Actually, Kuka pays Duke but he takes a fall to his mass serpent wards. They deal so much DPS, especially with the Agnes have to upgrade. Familiar drops, gold feed drops, TYK getting wiped. Both familiars go down. Pandy's running for his life, and all they lose for that no is the Shadow Shaman who had to buy back into the game, as well as the Nature's Prophet buy back and the Shadow Shaman. That actually could be a game right now. Yeah. Sven has no buyback. Yeah, Magnus can't defend without RP. He's going for that refresher or upgrade, but he's only going to get one man RP. Felfi and friends playing fantastically. They know that uh, TYK really rely on the vacuum into RP combination. So they've been splitting up, making sure they're always apart from each other, so that they just have to wait for Penny to get a uh, trigger happy, initiate, oh, and then go oh. in. Penny almost died to Nature's Prophet. <laughs> even if he's alive, there isn't anything you can do against this push. They're gonna lose a oh, yeah. Rex. They could even be Mega Rex, uh, Mega Creeps at this point. Just because Fen doesn't have God Strength, so even if he chooses to engage, he's got a four second BKB and no God Strength. He really can't actually do all that much damage. They take a Rax and Felfi and friends playing very methodically. They're backing away. They're going to go for Roshan. They know they've already got the game in the bag. So there's no need to throw. There's no need to overcommit. Dragon Knight almost has a Daedalus. Very, very farm Dragon Knight. A Soul Karas, Shadow Blade, BKB, and a Daedalus. EDF3 up on him. So he's getting the uh, Crick uh, uh, Cleave coming up from EDF3. Dragon Knight's going to be handing like an absolute Mac truck. He's too difficult to bring down right now. He could go toe to toe with Sven and not give a damn with 40 armor up on him. He, could t he has 70% physical damage uh, reduction, so Sven can't actually kill Dragon Knight if he focuses him. He has to target somebody else next to him and hope that the cleave oh, damage kills him off. Ice Blast! It was actually going to kill Bristleback! <laughs> nah, no, never mind. If he had an accept, though, maybe. Yeah, that would have killed him. He's going for a harder Tarask, so very tanky Bristleback. Valerie's going to be taking a fall. One right click, two right click, three right clicks, and Nature Prophet seals the deal. Has a Molnir as well as a Desolator. Very strange item pickup coming out from him. <laughs> Considering the fact that Desolator does physical DPS and Molnir does magical. Come, come. Would have liked to see something like maybe a Daedalus up on him instead. Yeah, I would prefer the Daedalus built, but the uh, Miona helped him farm much faster. So. Yeah, that's true. So he has been making it work. I'm not too sure. Yeah. Nature's Prophet offlane was not punished at all. Well, TYK decisively won their tri lane. They didn't rotate just because of a fear for leaving Kukar paying to his own devices against the Bristleback. So that really cost them in the late game. Because the Dragon Knight was pretty uncontested. He only died twice in this entire game. He's picked up a Daedalus now. Nature's Prophet as well. He were, really wasn't pressured, even though he should have been, since he didn't have boots. Just rush that Midas. Very greedy build. 
the draft was quite um in terms of defensive power, the draft was quite weak because Nature's Prophet was real squish. Yeah. And TYK just didn't took advantage of that. He even went for the uh very greedy ring of Basilius build instead of the uh, bulldog build, which is the starting out with the boots. He even went for minus as his first item, so he had no boots. Actually, a toilet break coming out from the players. I guess it's been a 50 minute game. If you got to go to the bathroom, you got to go to the bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> so it looks like Rose a 2.5k MMR. So, a bit surprised that his teammates have bodily functions. People do have to go to the bathroom from time to time, it's what we have to do. Aegis the Immortal up on, uh, I think, Dragon Knight? Yeah, so with that Daedalus and the Assault Karas, he's hitting like a Mack truck. The issue with Dragon Knight as a hard carry is that he needs a lot of farm to be effective just because he needs attack speed as well as damage, just because as a strength hero, he doesn't really have much attack speed. And he, his base damage is actually fairly low. Assault Karas mitigates uh, two of those issues as it gives him more survivability, makes him attack faster. And it means that he actually does a fair amount of damage since the negative armor from the Soul Karas, as well as the cleave coming out from uh, EDF3 means he actually does hit fairly hard and the Daedalus just seals the deal since it gives you a huge amount of DPS. Even without the uh, crit, the crit's just the icing on the cake. Yeah, Dragonite has been playing very well this game. Yeah, we were doubting the effectiveness of the Shadow Blade pickup, but he has been making it work. he went BKB first. Yeah, maybe they would have won these early engagements then, but even though TYK won the early engagements, they weren't able to uh, break high ground, and that turned out to be the critical factor. They couldn't break high ground. Yeah. They weren't able to deal yeah, with the Nature's Prophet. Did. Yeah, that split push coming up from split him. Push was too strong. The thing you have to keep- he now picks up a Daedalus, so my god, he is stacked as all hell. Sheepstick, Molnir, Daedalus, and a Desolator. If he catches a hero on his own, he's just gonna smack him down. A thing to keep in mind with Dota is it's a, the objective of the game is to destroy the throne. Everything else is secondary to that. So that's why Nature's Prophet works. It's because he doesn't care about fights. He doesn't care about ganking or kills. All he cares about is breaking your base. And with that global teleportation ability, he could always punish you if you don't react in time. Bombed. So it's the guerrilla warfare coming out from Nature's Prophet. It's Sun Tzu's Art of War. You attack where the enemy is not. So when they're mid, you attack their base. You force them to react to you. That gives your team the advantage because you always have to respond to the Nature's Prophet. And even if you kill him, just because he has so much gold gain from the Wrath of Nature as well as the Midas, uh, he can, oh, he always has the buyback, so you have to kill him twice, which is very difficult to do. Just because Nature's Prophet, if he's playing safely, it should be a hard target to gank. <clears throat> so, road to 2.5k MMR, creating a huge amount of space for his team. We've got a 4-man smoke rotation over to uh, Pandy. If Pandy's fast with his uh, Blink Dagger, he should be able to jump on out. He's picked up the Refresher Orb, so he even if he whiffs 1 RP, he could actually use that to his advantage and try to catch him out when they overcommit. So we'll see how effective this is now, but at the same time, they're about to be... Uh, Sven. Sven is caught in a position right now, he's isolated for the rest of his team. Smoke is broken, so I know something's up. Dragonite comes and pops his EDF 3, goes in on Valerie as well as Golf, he stuns him, Valerie dies instantly. 3-man RP, Refreshes, gets another 3-man RP as well, Ice Blast flies out. Where's the wall from Golfy? Just came off cooldown, there we go, there's the vacuum of the wall. Sven uh, bought back in the game, he wasn't in that fight. They were able to execute the combination, but without the Sven, and without the Sven, they, you don't have any damage. Golfi takes a fall with the Breed Fire finishing him off. Sven comes back and he actually cops 600 pure damage uh, from killing off the Necro 3. He smacks down Shadow Shaman, takes the fall. Poor Shadow Shaman, he seems to be on the receiving end of Sven every single fight. But he's more than happy to take that trade, and that looks like game for TYK. There's no way they can come back. They I gave it their Sven, best shot. Sven was the deciding, he just lost the yeah, he was isolated from that fight, so he was split up. He died. And even though Pandy and Golfi got a perfect combination off with the RP, the double RP as well as the vacuum of the wall, without Sven there to capitalize on that, it just falls apart. So TYK, they've drafted too many moving pieces that relied on perfect execution from all five players. Whereas Valfi and friends, they have a lot more room, to, room for error, and that's ultimately what won them the game. They are able to execute their much more flexible drafts. Radiant structures are fortified. That means you can Not even calling GG, so they're just gonna Radiant force them to break down their, the ancients. TYK, they must be in pretty Radiant dark mood right now. They gave it their best shot, but ultimately, Delphi and friends able to seal the deal. Any final thoughts on the game, 5 200? Well, thank you, Lane me Cold Castle for you. It's a good series. No worries, man. If you're ever free. <laughs> Sorry? If you're ever free to our uh, codecast, more than happy to jump in. This goes to uh, mid and drafters for uh, most teams. 
Would like to get a Codecaster rotation going on. Have had uh, Ghoulie jump in, so carry player, as well as Flash and Yoshi. So I think at 7 o'clock we right. do have uh, two IP playing up against Horseman the Ruckus. In about 20 minutes we've got another game to cast. And so stay tuned for more Dota, but that should be it for now. 49 signing out.